Welcome and happy, blessed Easter. It is such a joy. I am so glad that all of you are here. It is, it is just wonderful. I'm so glad each one of you chose to be at this time on this day for us all to celebrate the resurrection together. Uh, a couple of announcements. Of course, thank you to my, my beloved tech technology director, uh, Ellen, who's going to keep everything running smoothly. My thanks to Sue Ramsey. No, I did not make this beautiful arrangement. Sue, of course, did the flowers this morning. We had an early service at the Labyrinth at 8.30, and she had huge arrangements. And she said, I made a small arrangement. This is small. Uh, for you. And if you were here, you could smell. She seems to have daffodils that smell absolutely fabulous. So uh, I am grateful to Sue for, for making things so beautiful. And uh, if, if Barb Faisig gets here, I'm gonna, I can thank her for, uh, for reading and responding, but I'm going to have the Henleys do the responding and I'll do the reading at this point. Um, a couple of, oh, hang on, let me go ahead and put on my uh, we did have a, uh, we had a good crowd at the uh, labyrinth this morning at 8.30, like I said, it was very cold, but that helped quite a bit. And we had 62 people come. It was absolutely wonderful. Just a couple of birthdays to remind folks of. Let's see. Oh, looks like Barb is going to make another run at the, heck, getting on, good. Um, uh, April 7th, this week, is Nancy Chilton from, Saint, from Trinity. It is her birthday. And uh, April 7th is also Dave Peterson's birthday, Mag Peterson's husband. So please keep them both in your birthday prayers this week. Um, let me think. I think that is all of our announcements. Again, welcome. I'm so glad each of you is here. And uh, our prelude is Jesus Christ is risen today. We can, uh, we can revel in our alleluias as we, uh, we bring those back with this Easter day.
Thank you, Ellen. I forgot to say before that hymn, that was from a church in England, uh, obviously from an Easter service a couple of years ago. And uh, I loved the, the group of um, Boy Scouts in the front row and then the, the, uh, the little scouts in the front row and in the row in front of them. But, but uh, it was a, it's a good rousing, remembering how, how it's going to feel when we all can sing out loud again. Um, I wanted to just check in. Did, did Barb, was Barb able to get in? Oh, yes. good. Oh, excellent. We're, welcome, Barb Facing. We're so glad you're here. Uh, so Henley's, you're off duty. And Barb Facing is going to do both our responses and our reading. So welcome. We're glad you're here. And for this Easter morning, it is such a joy to begin by saying, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Barb will now read the lesson from Isaiah for us. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all people, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Thank you so much, Barb. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white, robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed but he said to them do not be alarmed do not be afraid you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified he has been raised he is not here look there is the place they laid him but go tell his disciples and Peter, that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. I have found this spring, really from very early March until now, that it's almost painfully beautiful to see spring coming. It is almost overwhelming in its beauty. And I, you know, it's a beautiful spring, but I, I feel it, I find much more deeply than I ever have. And I know that that comes from the fact that of course, this past year has been so dark with so much grief, so many who have died, so many who have been in grief, all of us grief stricken for our country and for our world as this pandemic has come through. This year has been difficult. And then the spring began. And beautifully, as vaccines have started to come out and folks have been able to get vaccinated, the spring has just, it's been, I, I can't, I don't just notice, you know, the big tree that's flowering. I find as I drive around the county that, you know, even just one daffodil, you know, off by, you know, the side of the road that some squirrel took and buried there. I mean, it catches my eye. I can't help but notice literally almost every blade of grass. I was out walking the dogs last night and Actually, I was only walking Bix, and so that meant that I had to wander around, you know, when, you know, Autumn is on a mission, and Bix is, Bix is out to smell everything in the neighborhood, and we came up to one of the, we're down by the water, and one of those sea grasses was there, all brown and everything, and I noticed there were just a few little green shoots coming up in the midst of all the, the old dead grass, and, you know, it's like every one of them takes my, my breath away. It just in the midst of such a dark and difficult year for the last year, the spring, I've never seen a spring that has been so full of resurrection, so full of hope, and that has, has drawn my eye to every, every place. And in fact, I, uh, we, we live, for those who don't know it, we live in the Indian Creek subdivision out uh, Bluff Point Road. And so we don't live in the country, but we do have space around us, but we have also have neighbors all around us. And on, our, uh, on one of my favorite walks across the way, there's a house <laughs> that has a sign that claims that the house was built in like 1683 or something. <laughs> and I think right here, now it could be possible. It's very close to, you know, one of the branches of Indian Creek. And, uh, but the rest of Indian Creek, I think all these houses were built in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. It's not exactly uh, matching the neighborhood's history. But this house says it was built in 1783 or something. And uh, it reminds me, though, of the fact that there are all these old broken down houses around in Lancaster and, and Northumberland. I'm sure you've seen them, too where the roof is starting to fall in or the walls are giving way. And yet, even in the wreckage, and this house isn't wrecked, I can tell you the only, the only old things I know about it, it's got two chimneys and it has mice. <laughs> Everybody who's ever lived there has told us that the house is full of mice. So I figure that means it's old. But it, it reminds me of those, of those old houses, you know, because right behind that house, the one that claims to have been built in 1683, is an empty lot. And it has the feel that so many spaces, and I haven't gone into it to look to the foundation, but that there was another house there. And you know what these falling down houses look like. You know, first the curtains are all closed and everything is, is quiet at a house. And then slowly, things start to deteriorate and die. And within that house, then the roof goes and then there's a door that's missing and then the windows are gone. And, and there are these amazing wreckages really that are, are beautiful, but are, are devastating. And it's one across the way though, I'm sure that there's some pieces of a house there, but every spring and particularly this exquisite spring, there are these waves, just waves 
of daffodils in the empty lot. They're, the, they're just, the, it's like the ocean rolling through this and every year they expand. And those daffodils are, are way back into the woods now. And they, you can even see one or two down the street that have wandered off just to, in case you didn't get the joy of the resurrection in the midst of the wreckage and in midst of the grief, those daffodils tell us how beautiful and how hopeful our world still is. Because of course, this day reminds us, this Easter Sunday and the resurrection of Jesus tell us that death is not the end. And among so many who have died this year, some that we know and loved and some we will never know, but this year of grief for our world, there is not, that's not the last word, that death is not the last word. And in fact, I, I, I want to pull this together with a sermon that a piece of a sermon, just an image from Dr. Martin Luther King. Now we tend to think of when Dr. King preached, I tend to think of him anyway, of course, you know, at the, the Washington, at the Lincoln Memorial, you know, and the, the I have a dream. And, uh, you know, there, are, if you, you know, his letters from Birmingham jail and, you know, everything he wrote was so um, spirit filled. And if it was a sermon, you know, it was for a huge, huge crowd. Well, this sermon was an Easter sermon and it's from 1957 when he uh, had his first call to come to the to come back to the south from Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama. And it was on April 21st, 1957. And it was an Easter sermon, which, you know, for this preacher, I'm like, I think of Dr. King, you know, doing only sermons that are, are heard by thousands. And it was like, you yeah, know, we all got to preach Easter, you know, and, uh, and, you know, got to do the second Sunday, Easter, the third Sunday, Pentecost, you know, Dr. King did them too, which keeps this little preacher going. But Dr. King on this, in this sermon, he talked about, um, well, he opens with Easter comes out ringing in terms that we all hear if we seek to hear it, that the soul of man is immortal. Through the resurrection of Jesus, we have fit testimony that this earthly life is not the end, that death is just something of a turn in the road. And this is the image that I love, that life moves down a continual moving river and that, just, and that death is just a little turn in the river, just a turn in the river. And to hear in Dr. King's words, that reminder that the resurrection of Jesus tells us that death never has the last word. And yes, we grieve. And yes, we are human and our hearts break. But we can know the comfort of the resurrection and know that the river will turn, but that the river goes on. And with that good, good news on this exquisite spring day, I can only call out, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Amen. And in that image of this exquisite spring, our, our hymn for after the sermon is frankly my favorite hymn. I think two years ago, the churches remember being forced to learn it. Uh, both churches learned it well, and uh, we will be, I'll be forcing you to do that again at some point. Um, and, uh, oh good, Teresa's coming in. I knew she had a house full of grandchildren, and now she's going to come popping in. Um, anyway, hi, hi, Teresa, we can hear you. Don't forget to mute. Oh, I'm sorry. I just popped in to wish everyone a happy Easter. And happy Easter to you, love. Hallelujah. <laughs> You hug those grandchildren for us, okay? Absolutely. Blessings. <laughs> um, the hymn before, or the hymn, excuse me, the hymn for after the, the sermon is my favorite, uh, Now the Green Blade Riseth, which of course is full of those images 
of the return of spring and within that, the resurrection. So please enjoy. And if you haven't learned it, get working on it because I'm going to make you sing it someday. Now the, now the green blade riseth. Thank you so much, Alan. We'll return to page three in our bulletin and uh, Barb will read the Apostles' Creed for us and we can follow along at home. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, made, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue now with the prayers of the people. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy for the peace and unity of the church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. 
We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially remembering Don Blaine, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray too for the special needs and concerns of these congregations, remembering from St. Mary's, Howard, Laura, Laura, Edward, the Coyle Cluel family, Virginia, Roberta, Ron, Agnes, Don, R.W., Dorsey, Glenn, Lynn, Jake, Dave, Dan, Hilda, Robert, Karen, Brad, and Jessica, Joanne, and Michael. And we remember from the Lancashire, Mary Sue, and in the armed forces, Jacob, Joshua, Catherine and Medi, Thomas, Pia, Tate, and Spencer. And from Trinity, we especially remember Fred, Lelily, Lorraine and Malcolm, Berkeley, Michael, Brad, Ian, and Brandon. And in the armed forces, we remember Giovanni, Ward, and Price, and Paul, excuse me. And now we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, dear friends, it brings me great joy to say and remind all of us that life is indeed short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind and rest assured that God is infinitely more concerned with the promise of all of our futures than any mistakes in our pasts. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon each of you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to go ahead and put your view back on gallery so that we can see one and other and that we can then wish one another ah, the peace of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.